This is the reading of the Bible study for 82817. It's a very important message and it's entitled Freedom Through Effectiveness. This is a good one to listen to, to read, and to share. Jesus died so that we could get to heaven, but Jesus also died to get heaven into us. I know that I'm born again. I know that when I'm done with this body, I will be in heaven. However, in this time that remains for me here on earth, I want to yield to Holy Spirit so that the atmosphere of heaven is manifested through my life to reveal the goodness of God to the lost. It's amazing how Jesus lived completely free from physical limitations. Jesus was not moved by impossibilities. He was not moved by situations and circumstances. He knew that anything on this earth was inferior and therefore subordinate to anything in the kingdom of God. Jesus also knew that he had complete access to anything of the kingdom of God. Jesus fed 5,000 people. He fed 7,000 people. This wasn't the limit that he was able to accomplish, just that that was the need for that time. Now, there are no limitations on Jesus. That's because Jesus perfectly walked in the Spirit. I know so many times we wrestle with things in the flesh, Amazingly, the way to overcome any inappropriate desire of the flesh is to yield to Holy Spirit, to enable us to effectively walk in the Spirit, because when we effectively walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. At different times, I find myself doing dumb things. At different times, I find myself having incorrect priorities. And at different times, I find myself having incorrect motives. And at different times, I find myself having incorrect desires. Now today, Holy Spirit wants to reveal to us how to have success over the carnal nature. You see, Holy Spirit has the ability to lead me and all of us to all truth, so I actually have freedom from doing dumb things. Holy Spirit guides my decisions to protect me from incorrect priorities. Holy Spirit guides me to what I have access to so that my motives can always be pure. Holy Spirit is able to empower me to walk in the Spirit even when I'm in this carnal body, so that I can minimize incorrect desires from even developing. The key to walking in freedom is found by walking in effectiveness. Holy Spirit will train me to think from my spirit, to think with a kingdom perspective. With constant influence by Holy Spirit, the desires of my flesh that oppose the truth of my life will be minimized. Let's work our way through these verses in this passage and allow Holy Spirit to lead us to the truth, to lead us to the effectiveness in order to reveal us how to live in freedom. Romans 8, 5-17 For those who are according to his flesh and are controlled by its unholy desires, set their minds on and pursue those things which gratify the flesh. But those who are accordingly, according to the Spirit and are controlled by the desires of the Spirit, set their minds and... Seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. Wow, we just received our first revelation. Whether we walk in the flesh or whether we walk in the Spirit is going to be determined by what we set our minds on. Do you know that you can walk in the Spirit with such effectiveness that your mind is consumed by the desire for spiritual things? You see, the mind is the deciding factor. When your mind is used to meditate on fulfilling the desires of the flesh, you will walk in the flesh. When the mind is used to meditate on yielding to Holy Spirit, you will walk in the Spirit. Now, the enemy works through fear. The enemy actually controls us through fear. And it's not the fear that would be associated with like, oh, I'm afraid of the dark. It's the fear that the demonic realm works through to actually cause us to allow desires to be created for things in the natural. You see, whatever you meditate on and give your attention to, a desire will be created for that thing. What you think about and give your attention to will create an affection for that thing. Now, this is important. We were created to meditate on the things of Father and His kingdom. As we give our attention and we meditate on the things of Father, an affection for Father and His kingdom is created inside of us. There is no fear associated with this affection because Father gives us Holy Spirit without any limitation. Father gives us access to His kingdom without any limitations. However, and this is big, however, when the enemy can get us to give our attention to something in the natural, he will begin to meditate on that something until a strong desire and affection is created for that thing. This is where the enemy interjects fear and uses it so effectively. When the enemy can cause you to be deceived, to allow an affection to be created for something in the world, then the enemy will demonically influence he has that affection. Now, through the deception of the enemy, the enemy will make something much more appealing than it truly should be. 
If that wasn't enough, the enemy will then create a fear in you to convince you that you cannot be happy without whatever it is that you now desire. And the enemy will create a fear that what you have a desire for is in short supply and may not even be available. The enemy uses this process so effectively to cause so many people to decide to get married for the wrong person and for the wrong reason. The enemy will cause a person to fixate on another person and feel that they could not live life without the person. Because of the pressure created by the demonic realm, people will rush into a marriage in order to attempt to minimize the potential loss of losing that person, only to find that they face a devastating loss when each partner of the marriage finds complete disfact dissatisfaction in that relationship. You see, we are in a war, and the war is between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. We were born again and filled with Holy Spirit and commissioned and empowered to bring the kingdom of God into a collision course with the demonic realm to undo the works of the enemy. The enemy knows this full well. Because of this, the enemy works to cause us to create affections for things in the natural realm, a realm which we are called to we are actually called to have authority over. Okay, let's keep going. And Holy Spirit will lead us to the truth to lead us to freedom. Verse 8. Now the mind of the flesh, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit, is death. Death that comprises all the miseries arising from the sin, but here and hereafter. But the mind of the Holy Spirit is life and soul, peace, both now and forever. The flesh does not have access to eternal life. The flesh is not capable of being filled with Holy Spirit. The flesh cannot be reborn. It is amazing how we get tempted to give our desires, attentions, and affections to something that has no profit. Well, it's all determined on what you meditate on. You see, when you are born again and filled with Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit ministers to your spirit to establish fruits, and the fruits of Holy Spirit manifest in your spirit. When you meditate on the things of the Spirit, your mind will be blessed with the benefit of Holy Spirit. And when you're blessed with the benefit of Holy Spirit, your mind is filled with peace, joy, and contentment. By meditating on the things of Father, your mind receives protection from the vulnerability of discontentment. When a person walks in the flesh, they are mindful of the things of the flesh. This means their mind is only fed by something that has no life. However, when the mind is full of revelation of the kingdom, God, peace, joy, and contentment are then established. When peace, joy, and contentment are established, layers of insulation, protective insulation, are established around your mind to give you strength and the ability to avoid being impulsively pulled into creating affection for things in the flesh which have the ability to cause you to make harmful, impulsive decisions. Verse 7 said that is because the mind of the flesh, with its carnal thoughts and purposes, is hostile to God, for it does not submit itself to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. God is love. The things of the flesh are hostile to God because they are hostile to love. Demonically enhanced desires for things in your flesh open the door for death, loss, and destruction. These ungodly desires open the door for bondage and torment. These are hostile to God because they are hostile to love. So often I've heard people say that God takes everything that is fun and calls it wrong. No, the enemy takes everything that is wrong, harmful, damaging, addictive, and wraps it in a bow, actually to make it look more appealing. And when you change the way you think, you change the way you see what changes the way you behave. Now, don't focus on having to give something up. Focus on dislodging the deception to cause all appeal for harmful behavior to be driven out to the truth given by Holy Spirit. We continue with scripture. So then, those who are living in the life of the flesh, catering to the appetites and impulses of their common nature, cannot please or satisfy God or be acceptable to him. But you are not living the life of the flesh. You are living the life of the Spirit. If the Holy Spirit of God really dwells within you, directs and controls you, but if anyone does not possess the Holy Spirit of Christ, he is none of it is his. He does not belong to Christ and is not truly a child of God. But if Christ in you, then, although your natural body is dead by a reason of sin and guilt, the Spirit is alive because of the righteousness that he inputs to you. And if the Spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then he who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will also restore to life your mortal, short-lived, perishable bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. So then, brethren... We are debtors, but not to the flesh. We are not obliged to our carnal nature to live 
is a life ruled by the standards set up by the dictates of the flesh. For if you live accordingly to the dictates of the flesh, you will surely die. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit you are habitually putting to death and making extinct, deadening the evil deeds prompted by the body, you shall really and genuinely live forever. This verse is really crucial because Holy Spirit empowers us. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. I like to read this as, For those and those alone who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of Father. So the evidence that you are a son or daughter of Father, you're led by Holy Spirit. Now there are three questions that we now need to take a look at. Why do I need to be led by Holy Spirit? Where are we going? How am I going to be led? Why? Because on my own, I am not equipped to succeed in this world. I am not of this world, so I must receive help to do my assignment. What is my assignment? To reveal Jesus. I am led by Holy Spirit because my assignment is to reveal Jesus. When that is attempted without being led by the Spirit of God, I only reveal my private, personal interpretation. When I am not led by Holy Spirit, I attempt to achieve the spiritual assignment with human ability. When I am not led by Holy Spirit, I become conformed to what I am assigned to change. If we walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. How can I possibly live in this world but avoid being attracted, attracted to and becoming involved in the things of this world? I don't know. And if the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, then, then how can I possibly engage in a war I was born into and obtain victory if I'm not led by Holy Spirit? You see, the enemy works through deception. The enemy demonically enhances things in this world to become tempting and alluring to us. Remember, he puts a bow on things. Now, unless you are led by the Spirit of God to walk in this Spirit, your time here on earth will be consumed by attempts to resist what the enemy presents to you in efforts to cause you to be conformed to that which you are assigned to change. Unless you are led by the Spirit of God, you will be deceived to walk in the flesh, which opens the door to death, to loss, and to destruction. If I'm not exposed to anything except that which the enemy has to prove, present to me, well, how will I possibly resist demonic temptation? If I am limited to walk in the flesh, how will I possibly resist that which is limited to the extent of what I know? My flesh does not have the strength to resist the weapons and the tactics of demonic welfare, not on its own. But when I walk in the flesh, I am in this world, and I'm also of this world. But when I walk in the spirit, I am in this world, but thank God I am not of this world. The Spirit is so superior to the flesh that when we lived in the Spirit, we will not lower ourselves to fulfill the desires of the flesh because they are so inferior to what we have access to in the Spirit. Resisting the things in the world are not just accomplished through self-discipline, resisting carnal temptations, is accomplished through being exposed to what is superior to anything in the natural. So where is Holy Spirit taking this? Holy Spirit is taking us to relationship that has the ability to enable us to effectively reveal Jesus to the lost. We are not debtors of the flesh. We are in debt to Jesus for what he has done for us. And we walk in the Spirit. We offer life to those who have never been exposed to it. The Spirit of the Lord was upon Jesus during his earthly ministry, and the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. The Spirit, Lord, is upon me because he has anointed me. The way to effectively quit the flesh is to walk in the Spirit and to start to minister to those in need. But you must be strong enough to do that so that the bow-tied promises of the devil do not intercede and take over. You see, the flesh is a taker. The flesh is selfish and driven by self-promotion. The flesh will constantly provide you with justification for doing what destroys you. The flesh is not concerned about the quality of life. The flesh is only concerned about its demands for the moment. The flesh doesn't care about debt and the motto of the flesh to play now or pay pay play now or pay later. Now, I'm sure you've heard that one before. The flesh will take you until you are conformed to this world and until you are in debt to the world so that you become a slave to the world. Amazingly, Holy Spirit has the ability to enable you to be a friend of Father and not a slave to the world. The spirit is an investor. The flesh is a spender. The flesh doesn't care about long-term health of your body. The flesh is only concerned about now. The flesh will always negotiate for just one more day. Let's have fun today, and tomorrow we will do what is right. 
Unfortunately, because the flesh only lives for today, tomorrow never comes and neither does your freedom. When you effectively press in to allow Holy Spirit to minister to your spirit and to strengthen your spirit, you obtain contentment, peace, and joy that have the ability to challenge the demands of the flesh. You are a spirit. You have a soul. And your spirit and soul are housed in a body. Your spirit is holy, and that's why you were led by Holy Spirit. You are a spirit. You were not designed to be led by your flesh. The way you quit the flesh is to continually expose it to the superior. You receive by giving. If the enemy can control you to be a taker, you become a slave to your taking because there is no blessing on taking, and there is also no path to freedom. Verse 15 says, For the spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you once more in bondage to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, the spirit producing sonship in the bliss of which we cry, Abba, Father. Again, fear causes bondage. The fear that the demonic realm causes is the fear of lack and the fear of loss. Like I said, the enemy will cause you to develop affections for things in the natural, convince you that you cannot live without those things, and then drive you to hoard those things, spend all your money on those things, and protect those things to which you place their value above your walk in the Spirit. When you are led by Holy Spirit, you walk in peace, joy, and contentment. And the enemy does not have the ability to make you a slave to things in the natural. The Spirit himself thus testifies together with our own spirit, assuring us that we are children of God. Can there be any greater place of peace, joy, and contentment than the assurance that we are children of Father? Holy Spirit testifies with our spirit. Our spirit then educates our mind, and the Word of God renews our mind. We become transformed. We become transformed by the revelation that we are sons and daughters of Father. Meditating on that revelation protects you from developing affection for things in the natural realm because they are proved to be inferior by the revelation of the access you have to, to the provisions of the kingdom of God. And if we are his children, then we are his heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing his inheritance with him. Only we must share his suffering if we are to share his glory. If you are a bodybuilder and you want to increase your strength, you will have to press past your comfort zone and you will experience physical pain. If you are a son or daughter of father and you want to increase in effectiveness, you will enter a spiritual warfare with the demonic realm. There will be suffering. You are not called to suffer with what Jesus died on the cross to free you from. However, as an heir of God and joint heirs with Jesus, you must continually die to the flesh and walk in the spirit to be able to walk in effectiveness. That's suffering, however, can be minimized as we are led by the Spirit of God to protect ourselves from being deceived to create affection for things in the natural. Now we go to Matthew 12, 28 through 30. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I drive out the demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. For those who are led by the Spirit of God, those are the sons and daughters of God. We need to know why, where, and how are led by Holy Spirit. Most of the reasons can be summed up in this passage. I am called to walk out the ministry that Jesus modeled for me. First John chapter 3, the word says that for this reason Jesus made manifest that he might undo the works of the devil. Wow, we were born into a war and I yield the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit ministers the kingdom of God through my spirit and through my life. And as I yield to house the Spirit of God, I bring the goodness and the power of God into a collision course with everything the demonic realm has infected and contaminated, I am empowered to undo the works of the enemy. The enemy knows that without deception, he is no match for me. Well, look at the next verse in Matthew. Or how can a person go into a strong man's house and carry off all his goods, the entire equipment of his house, without first binding the strong man? Then indeed, he may plunder his house. I am the strong man because I am led by the Spirit of God. Jesus defeated the enemy. There's only one way the enemy can be effective, and that's by binding me. When the enemy can effectively cause me to develop affections for things in the natural, the enemy can bind me and control me because the enemy holds the access to that which I am deceived that I cannot live without. Jesus describes the enemy 
as being the evil ruler, the evil genius of this natural realm. However, in Romans 5.17, the word says that I am called to reign as a king in life through my oneness with Jesus. Obviously, there will be a confrontation. Obviously, because I am in Christ Jesus and I'm a strong man. And as long as I remain strong in Christ Jesus, the enemy cannot take control of the goods of my house. Remember, a house refers to my life and the goods refer to the anointing. The power and authority that I am empowered to walk in. If I walk in the flesh, it's because the enemy has found a way to bind me, to make me a slave and make me ineffective. When that happens, the enemy has restricted me from undoing his works. However, when I walk in the Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit, I'm empowered to undo his works. Verse 30. He, is, he who is not with me, definitely on my side, is against me, and he who does not definitely gather with me and for my side scatters. The enemy attempts to bind me so that he has the ability to carry off all the equipment of my house. The goods of my house and my spiritual weapons of warfare, my life, the goods of my house is the full armor of God. When I walk in the spirit, the enemy does not have the ability to bind me through deception. When I walk in the spirit, I am led by Holy Spirit. When I walk in the flesh, I walk out a carnal instead of spiritual walk. When I walk in the flesh, I have been pulled down to a deceptive lifestyle of being enslaved by the demonic realm. I will either be led by Holy Spirit to be empowered to walk out the kingdom of God or I will be deceived and bound by the enemy to walk out a carnal life through my own human strength and reasoning. When I do not walk in the Spirit, I do not gather people to Jesus. If I give the enemy access to my life in even a small way to cause me to be deceived and not to yield to Holy Spirit, I will not walk in truth and I will not lead others to truth. Don't allow the enemy to isolate you and make you feel that you're the only one who struggles with affections for things in the world. Don't allow the enemy to keep you in slavery through fear. Don't focus on what you have to walk away from. Focus on what you're blessed to walk in. The enemy works so hard to keep you in the flesh to make you ineffective. However, that's because he knows how effective you are when you walk in the spirit. If you are led by Holy Spirit and the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, your walk with Holy Spirit will redefine your desires because you will be led by Holy Spirit and not your flesh. When you don't know who you are, the enemy will be very quick to conform who you are not. Stop declaring what you see. Declare what you have the potential to see based on the provisions of the kingdom of God. The demonic realm will torment the mind until you concede to give what the body demands despite the potential disastrous outcomes. When a stronghold has been established, the only way to retain the thought from following the exact same path is to offer truth that reveals the authentic. When you don't know who you are, you don't know what you possess. You don't know your purpose, so you are deceived not to be responsible by walking in your ability. Then you will be irresponsible by falling and to and failing to steward the ability that was the basis for your responsibility. Well, in closing, we'll say that any time incorrect religious teaching attempts to put limits on the power of what we are called to walk in because of the limitations that come from the exalting the natural realm over the kingdom of God, the enemy is attempting to stop our effectiveness at controlling his activities. Abundant life is experiencing heaven in a physical body.